the invitation to participate today and thanks also to Joanne and Antonio and Maria and to all our friends and colleagues in Fonseam and also in Club Espanol, Espanol de la Energia. It's a great pleasure to be collaborating with you uh, and particularly in the wonderful new book that you have produced and it's a great honor to be asked to present at today's uh, symposium and I look forward to discussing with everyone some of our thinking on energy efficiency in this very unusual and challenging year and where uh, we might be able to go next. So of course we all know that in 2020 uh, we have seen ourselves living very unusual lives. Covid has been a crisis of health and well-being and many people have suffered greatly and we acknowledge that and of course there has been the an economic and social dimension to this. Many of us have spent a year in some form of containment or lockdown. Even right now, I'm speaking to you from my home here in Paris as our second lockdown continues. Situations are in different countries quite different, but for as a whole, the year has been one of containment and constraint. And that has had many, not just economic implications, but for today's discussion, many implications for energy systems uh, and for climate related uh, impacts of that. First of all, we have all seen ourselves um, grounded, I suppose is the word. I, it's interesting to note that the, the last time I was on an airplane was to visit you all in Barcelona for the wonderful uh, event you held in February. Since then, I have not been uh, anywhere, certainly not nearly as nice as Barcelona, but I have not been uh, able to leave the city of Paris and, and equally most people have been working from home where that is possible, that uh, long distance travel has been curtailed and of course urban transport has, has been curtailed. In some cases such as here in Paris, urban transport has grown again since the first lockdown but we still see constraints right up to now and we will until the new year. And of course that has great implications for energy demand, we see historic drops in oil related demand to do with transport in 2020. Uh, the demand continues to be suppressed quite significantly uh, in all sectors at the moment. In electricity, the story is obviously a little more complicated because while we were maybe not using electricity in our offices so much, we were using more electricity in our homes and in other ways. I think the real story of electricity in 2020 has been the question of resilience because it's a reminder that we rely so heavily on secure and strong electricity systems to make our lives possible and to keep our well-being in place and I think we all realize how even so much more difficult 2020 could have been if we were not able to rely on our electric electricity systems around the world which have helped us in so many ways including the connectivity we are benefiting from today as well as comfort and warmth and all that goes with our daily lives. So we have seen many changes in the energy system of 2020 and of course it, this has had very significant implications for energy related uh, carbon emissions and in particular we see that um, 2020 will witness a completely unprecedented fall in global greenhouse gas emissions related to the energy sector. We have never seen anything like it. The only fall that we've seen that it compares in any way was in 2009 and the previous economic crisis. But you can see that after a fall in 2009 associated with lower economic activity, economies, industrial activity, commercial activity, all rebounded very quickly and therefore so did carbon emissions. And carbon emissions quickly grew to historic highs well beyond what we had seen and well beyond the fall that took place in, 2020, in 2009. So here we are in 2020 witnessing an unprecedented fall in greenhouse gas emissions because of economic disruption. It's important to say that while it is always good to see greenhouse gas emissions fall, this year they are falling for all the wrong reasons. They are falling because our lives have been disrupted, people have had serious health consequences, serious personal economic consequences, and this is in no way a sustainable or desirable way to see global greenhouse gas emissions fall. 
And the question is, what happens next? And the answer to that question is, it is up to us all, and it is particularly up to governments in terms of the policies they put in place as we hopefully start to recover from the bad year of 2020 and start to see our lives and well-being and our economies recover and grow once more in 2021. Now, if no further policy actions are taken, if we recover in an unsustainable way, there is no reason not to assume that emissions will start to grow again quickly and that they will continue to grow as they have done in recent years. There is no reason to expect that emissions are going to stay low on their own without the right government responses. However, with these government responses, there is a historic opportunity to align recovery goals, economic recovery, economic stimulus and job creation with sustainability goals in terms of clean energy transitions and decarbonization. And if those goals are aligned and if governments take wise and well-designed actions, we could see ourselves at a moment today where greenhouse gas emissions from energy never rise again. And we could finally see ourselves on the perpetual downward trend of emissions towards the ambitious decarbonization goals Europe and many other parts of the world have set for themselves. So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to put the right policies in place and invest in the right technologies and actions to build in a truly sustainable recovery starting now and lasting for a very long time. This is driven by investment in key sectors and key technologies. And in our analysis in the IEA Sustainable Recovery Plan, which is available on our website, we have analyzed how, what are the best technologies and sectors to align short-term job creation and economic stimulus goals with longer-term clean energy and carbon reduction goals. And it will become as no surprise, I think, to this audience to understand that energy efficiency is the biggest proportion of the investment opportunity. It represents over one third of the total spending opportunity in the IEA Sustainable Recovery Plan, along with key sectors such as electricity, renewables, of course, and infrastructure. Now, the reason why it's not surprising that energy efficiency leads the way in the IEA Sustainable Recovery Plan is because energy efficiency is what we call a job creating machine particularly in, in building new buildings, in upgrading and retrofitting existing buildings, in the industrial sector, upgrading activities to be more efficient, in the transport sector also. All of these sectors are jobs intensive and can be mobilized to not just create many jobs, but to do so quite quickly. We know from previous experience that investment by government and the private sector in key sectors such as buildings can mobilize economic activity quickly and can return pe people in large numbers to employment and while at the same time locking in much higher levels of energy efficiency that will stay with us for decades. And so the decisions we all make in the coming year or two as individuals and as societies will be key to determining do we exploit the opportunities to really align our short-term economic recovery imperatives with longer-term goals around making societies more efficient in their energy use, therefore more affordable to everybody, making our industrial sectors more competitive, making our energy systems and economies more resilient, and of course, putting us all on a path to cleaner, more sustainable and lower carbon energy systems. Now is really a crucial moment in the history of energy and climate policy as decisions are going to be made that either put us back on the old bad ways or put us forward on much more sustainable ways. And it's not just about short-term goals, because if we look over the coming decades, we know from our analysis here at the IEA that if we focus on energy efficiency for the next two decades, between now and 2040, we can literally double the energy efficiency of the global economy which some people find surprising. But if you look at all the opportunities, even just exploiting existing technologies, such as more efficient buildings, more efficient appliances, more efficient industrial equipment, if all we do is exploit every technology that is available to us today to improve our energy efficiency, 
Well, then in 20 years' time, we could see global energy imports reduced by $700 billion a year. We could see huge reductions in energy expenditure for industry, but for, all, for also all of us as householders, our collective energy spend in just 20 years could be half a trillion dollars lower every year. All of these benefits come on top of the benefits of a more sustainable and resilient energy system, and of course, more crucially, a lower carbon energy system, where energy efficiency can be first and foremost at driving economic recovery and clean energy transitions. The question is then, what are the actions that governments should consider taking to avail of these great potential opportunities in the next year or two and in the next decade or two? And we at the IEA have been working with governments all around the world to help understand what are the policy options and the opportunities available to governments uh, to put in new policies and programs that will help exploit the potential of energy efficiency. You'll find a range of recent publications and analyses on our website at IEA.org. And in particular, we have been working with governments to understand what can we learn from recent experience about the design and even more importantly, the correct implementation of policies that align sustainable recoveries with energy efficiency and clean energy goals. And there's a lot to learn from recent practice and from best practice right around the world, particularly in the last decade when many governments put strong new policies in place about 10 years ago to help recover from the last global financial crisis and to exploit ways of aligning energy efficiency and economic recovery with job creation in the past decade. And if we look at all of those opportunities by sector or by technology, we can learn a lot about how governments made use of best technologies, made use of existing supply chains, managed to mobilize finance, both public and private, in ways that saw heavy investment in energy efficiency sectors, such as buildings, transport and industry, and created significant numbers of jobs as well as improving global energy efficiency. So there's a lot to learn from governments working with each other and learning from best practice right around the world as to how to put their best policies in place. And in that regard, I want to tell you about one particular conversation we have been facilitating in the last year uh, through the forum of the Global Commission for Urgent Action on Energy Efficiency. This was convened in mid-2019 by the executive director of the IEA to bring together heads of state, energy ministers, and leading thinkers from around the world to pool their experience and wisdom on how best to design and implement policies to make faster and quicker action on energy efficiency. And of course, we were very pleased and honored that the Spanish Deputy Prime Minister was one of the key members of this commission and brought a lot of great wisdom and experience to the conversations that we had. So this commission commenced before the COVID-19 crisis, but finished its recommendations in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. And this timing was really very fortuitous because the focus was already on urgent action and stronger action. And of course, it was very obvious to align the work of the Global Commission with the new focus on economic stimulus and job creation where energy efficiency has so much to offer. So recently, just before the summer, <coughs> excuse me, the Global Commission made their key recommendations. There are 10 key recommendations focusing from making energy efficiency a priority across all of government, focusing on the job creation potential of energy efficiency and creating greater demand and greater financing to the role of citizens, to the role of engaging society, the ro role of behavior change, and of course, the role of international collaboration and global action. Uh, as well as making these key recommendations, the Global Commission brought together a, a knowledge set of over 200 best practice case studies from all around the world of good learning and good success in energy efficiency. And so this has become a very rich resource for governments now investigating what policy options they have and how best to design and implement those policies so that short-term action can lead to long-term gain. I also want to mention briefly before I close that digital technology and digital innovation is really changing energy efficiency and creating a whole new set of opportunities 
for energy efficiency gains to our general economic and social and environmental benefit. In particular, digitalization through greater levels of control, data gathering, data analysis, and of course, uh, interfaces for all of us to un understand and control our energy use is making energy efficiency much more dynamic, part of a whole system thinking, particularly in electricity, about making the best use of intermittent resources like solar and wind, about making the demand side much more flexible and dynamic, and bringing overall system optimization and greater levels of energy system efficiency. It is also making citizens, consumers of energy in our homes, in our industries, in our workplaces, places much more informed and much more empowered to make intelligent energy choices and to automate energy systems in a way that brings greater levels of comfort and convenience while also lowering costs and making systems more clean and more efficient. So I believe firmly that we are on the cusp of some really great change and opportunity in energy efficiency driven by digitalization, driven by smart grids and by smart technologies. And I want to let you know that we are working very closely with many members of the IEA, and in particular, we're working very closely with the government of Italy, who is incoming president of the G20 in 2021, on some very exciting initiatives around smart grids, energy efficiency, and smart technology. And I'd be happy to talk to anybody uh, who is interested in learning more about this area and maybe getting more involved. Finally, before I close, I again want to thank uh, our host today and thanks all of our colleagues in Spain for such great collaboration uh, at government level and at stakeholder, civil society and at business level. We really enjoy the collaboration we have between the IEA and all of our friends and colleagues in Spain. I want to say to you that all of our resources, all of our advice and data is available to you on the IEA website. It's freely available there. We have a, a number of major reports. We are holding a series of events, which we'd be happy to let you more about, know more about. Of course, like everybody, we're using all of the virtual tools to interact with our friends and colleagues right around the world and to bring together many discussions about these important energy efficiency issues that I have been uh, talking to you about today. And I particularly want to let you know that later this week on Thursday, we will be publishing our latest annual tracker report on energy efficiency, Energy Efficiency 2020, which will delve even more deeply into many of the questions I have touched on briefly today in terms of what has happened in 2020 that has changed global energy systems, what has happened to energy demand, what has happened to energy efficiency, and of course, what are the implications of that for all of us as societies, as economies, and what are the policy responses that governments should be considering now as they look to get societies and economies back on track and hopefully to do so in a way that locks in greater levels of energy efficiency and clean energy transition 